Today on the show, every day the Nuclear Regulatory Commission publishes a list of event notification reports, otherwise known as ENRs. ENRs are filed by nuclear plants with the NRC to report an event. Today, we'll discuss two of these recent ENRs and how, by timely coincidence, they chime with a video expose that Fairwinds is about to release. All right, now to get right to it, Arnie Gunderson, thanks for coming on again this week. Hey, Kevin, thanks for having me again. I wanted to get started with uh, a little discussion about an ENR. What is an ENR? Now, I know you're watching what the nuclear regulatory puts out almost every day, if not several times per day. And I understand that an ENR is uh, something that the uh, nuclear industry publishes to the NRC when they have a problem? Yeah. If anyone wants them, they're available on the NRC website. They're called ENRs, Event Notification Reports. And every day, anything that went wrong at a nuclear plant that rises to a certain threshold uh, gets reported in these ENRs. It's not just nuclear plants. There's uh, 20,000 other nuclear licensees around the country a lot of um, people use radiation sources for um, uh, pipeline inspection and things like that. So there's a mixed bag of you know lost sources or or radiation turning up in a scrapyard um, or you know a nuclear plant problem. But these ENRs are um, every day the NRC publishes them. So this is a daily update. Yes, you're right. Not necessarily something interesting. Is it, uh, what, 90% mundane? Or <laughs> Oh, it's probably 95% mundane. I read them every day, and uh, uh, usually on my first cup of coffee. And uh, every once in a while, one wakes me up, and I don't need the caffeine anymore. <laughs> so this week, the reason we're talking about these ENRs is because you did find something interesting. Yeah, this is a, a fascinating week. There's actually two ENRs this week. And, you know, they're interesting in their own right. But on top of that, we shot a, a Fairwinds video, and it takes us about two weeks to get a video up. So at the beginning of December, uh, we shot this Fairwinds video, and we talked about two blockbuster issues. And, and, and the issues are the, that containment's leak and that the loss of the ultimate heat sink is, uh, is an unaddressed problem. And son of a gun, here are two ENRs this week. One is about containments leaking, and the other is about the uh, loss of the ultimate heat sink. So we, we're essentially uh, getting some early publicity from the NRC for the, uh, you know, for the, the, the video that we're going to post on, um, on, on Monday at noon. And, of course, when we shot this video, this was before any of this surfaced. Right, right. You know, I think our frequent viewers will know that we've done, uh, these have been two of our major concerns, but uh, we wanted to end the year with this this blockbuster investigation of those two issues, which we did. And, and son of a gun, before we could even put the video up, the NRC comes along and basically confirms what, everything we had to say. So let's, get, let's start with this containment leakage, ENR. Tell me about it. What's happening? Yeah. There's a, a boiling water reactor almost identical to Fukushima in upstate New York, and it, it's called uh, Nine Mile Point. Um, it's up on, um, uh, up on the lake at the northern end of New York State. And it's interesting. I mean, that's where I, I, I met Maggie in our 30-some-odd years ago, um, was, uh, was up in that very area. So anyway, this, this plant, Nine Mile Point, has a, uh, has a leak in the containment. And they published their ENR, and they've had to shut down because the containment is leaking. So, Arnie, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has, for a long time now, maintained that containments don't leak. Um, and this is a topic that you discuss in the video coming out this Monday. Um, but here, again, we see that containments may, in fact, leak. Can you talk about this? Yeah, this one up at Nine Mile, the plant is shut down, and they haven't found the cause of the leak yet. But uh, let, let's talk at a couple, couple of others that have been in ENRs over the last couple of, uh, couple of years. There's another plant right next to Nine Mile called Fitzpatrick, and it's a boiling water reactor just like the Fukushima Daiichi reactors as well. And uh, an employee was walking by the containment and saw a four-inch crack 
in the side of the containment. And it was bleeding rust. It was so well worn that rust was oozing out and running down the side of the containment. And, and it's interesting, the NRC's response, they, first off, they didn't shut down immediately. They waited a day or two to think about it. And the uh, NRC never really penalized them for waiting a day or two when they didn't have a containment. But the NRC allowed them to repair it, which is a good thing, and then test to see if it leaked. The NRC never asked them to test before the repair was made. So, you know, the, the NRC staff has routinely told the uh, Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards that every time a containment has been tested, it's never leaked. But they always give them these, uh, the, these do-overs where they get to repair the, the, the damage before they do the test. Well, that's... Uh, that's Wait, maybe I'm not understanding this. You're saying that they come in and they test for leaks, but they allow them to do the repairs before they test for leaks? Yes. And, and it's not just um, uh, at Nine Mile, I'm sure they'll find a leak and I'm sure they'll uh, then do the test. But they'll never measure the leak rate before they do the test. It happened at Fitzpatrick, and they, they welded back over this crack and then did a test and said, oh, my God, the, the containment doesn't leak. Isn't that good? It also happened at, at Beaver Valley where a two-inch hole was discovered in the side of the containment, and they um, didn't require a leak test. The NRC patch, had them patch the hole, and then they did a leak test and said, oh, my God, it doesn't leak. This is a trend at the NRC. It's, it's not just those reactors. There were uh, a couple in Virginia that had leaks. Uh, there was the Turkey Point reactors in Florida uh, just uh, two years ago had, um, had leaks in the containment. And no one asked them to determine what the leak rate was. They patched it, and then they were allowed then to test. And, of course, you know, after you fix the problem, you're not going to find the problem. So what is the difference? I mean, I uh, this makes me think of going into the dentist to get my teeth filled and then going in for a checkup to see if I have any cavities. Yeah, it's uh, look, mom, no cavities. That's a perfect analogy. After you fix the problem. Right. After you've had your cavities uh, repaired, then you can claim you have no cavities. That's exactly what the NRC does on containment leak rate testing. So, Arnie, moving on to another topic here, loss of the ultimate heat sink. This is something you've been talking about for quite some time, and just a few days ago, if not a week ago, the NRC had published a, an ENR related to that. Can you talk about that just a bit? Uh, yeah. At the, uh, at the Sequoia plant in, uh, in Tennessee, there, there was, uh, they just discovered that the building that houses their emergency cooling water pumps uh, some people call them uh, emergency service water. Uh, the Sequoia plant calls them the uh, emergency raw cooling water. But in any event, it pumps cooling water to the diesels, and it pumps uh, cooling water to cool the uh, heat exchangers that cool the nuclear reactor. Well, they just discovered that, they, uh, that, that the building that houses these pumps uh, was not leak tight, and that if, uh, if a flood came along, the, the building would leak, and that the sump pumps were not big enough to pump it out. In other words, the flood coming in would overwhelm the pumps designed to, to pull whatever water leaks out. Uh, so they declared a, uh, an ENR and, uh, and put the NRC on notice that they, had a, that they had a problem. This is exactly what happened at Fukushima Daiichi. The water overwhelmed the service water pumps. Uh, and, and here we've had many replays of this here in the States, but the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission doesn't seem to be doing too much about it. So does Sequoia get any bonus points for reporting this? No, basically they've said that they're, they're, uh, since there's no flood now, they're going to keep running and they're going to go out and repair this thing and uh, so they'll keep their eye on the river to make sure that there's no floods. And uh, So basically you're expected to self-report. And uh, that's the only way the system works. You know, there's only two NRC inspectors on every site. And at Sequoia, there's, there's probably close to 1,000 employees. So there's no way there's enough, there's enough um, inspectors to keep track of everything. So they've got to self-report. Uh, self so these are the pumps that cool the reactor. These are the pumps that the reactor relies on 
not to go into meltdown in the case of a problem. Uh, my understanding then is that these pumps at Sequoia are not themselves submersible pumps, but they're housed in a structure that is supposed to be leak-proof. You're telling me that this ENR published by the NRC is stating that the housing that these pumps are in has now been determined not to be leak-proof. That's right. That's right. You know, it, you've got two ways of solving the problem. You can make the building leak-proof or you can make the pump leak-proof. And at Sequoia, now they've just realized they have neither. Now, we don't know how long this problem has existed. You know, is it uh, something that, that developed in the last year or have they been running for 30 years with this problem? Um, we just don't know. And the other piece of it is that this is a design basis flood to the old standards. And you'll recall the NRC is trying to get people to reevaluate the design basis flood. And so no one knows what else is out there. We're going to find now when floods are determined to be five feet higher than they had been designed for, we're going to find more of this. That's what we were talking about in the, um, in the video that's coming out on Monday is the, the issue that the NRC has been like an ostrich in the sand ignoring this whole issue of flooding the cooling pumps that are designed to protect the reactor. I think this video is going to make these two issues very clear for the viewers. Again, containment leakage is one issue and loss of the ultimate heat sink is the other issue. Both issues now are being at least talked about and um, at least by TEPCO acknowledged. What uh, Can you tell us anything about this video? Maybe a little sneak peek. Well, we, we, uh, we, we've been studying this issue for months. And, you know, our, our frequent viewers will know we've been on it for since April of the very first time after the accident. But we have some pretty conclusive evidence of, of a detonation shockwave. And uh, we've got some pretty conclusive evidence that the NRC is ignoring uh, loss of the ultimate heat sink. So the, the video that's going up on uh, Monday at noon is, uh, is basically a, an expose on uh, things that the Fairwinds has been saying uh, all along. We now have the evidence that pretty much proves unequivocally that, uh, that Fairwinds was right, that containments can blow up with a detonation shockwave and that loss of the ultimate heat sink is being ignored by your, your friendly regulators at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. All right, so that video coming on tomorrow at noon, Monday, tomorrow at noon, on fairwinds.org. Uh, anything else today, Arnie? No, I think that's it. That's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty full week, actually. <laughs> Arnie Gunderson, thanks for joining us again this week. Thanks for having me, Kevin. <laughs>